Hello everybody. Today I would like to talk to you about my Old School 9394 collection of magic. I mostly acquired these cards in 2017, early 2018. I managed to get many of those cards before the price spike, which is very nice. And as you can see, I arranged them according to the color and to the casting cost. First, I also wanted to arrange them alphabetically. And as you can see, I did this for white, but then I decided that this might be a little bit too much of trouble, especially when I put these cards back together after I have played them in some deck. So, as you can see, we start with white. And my initial idea for the order of colors of magic was, and it started back in 1997, so don't get me wrong, I know about the color pentagram, of course, but my initial idea was that white is the goodest color in terms of alignment. Then you have got green, which is also not evil, but a little bit chaotic. Then we have got blue, which is neutral. And then we've got red, which is chaotic, not necessarily evil, but still causes a lot of destruction. And then black, which is pure evil. Of course, nowadays we understand that this is not entirely true, because we have got some horrible cards in white, and uh, they can be very cruel, and it's not necessarily that white is the good color, it's not necessarily uh, true that uh, the worst color is black, so obviously <laughs> this is uh, not how it really is, but uh, this is anyway my rationale for arranging the cards. and. Speaking of the casting cost, I arranged them from the lowest casting cost to the highest casting cost, and also based on how splashable they are. That's why you have got Pearl Unicorn, which is two generic and one colored mana, and then you have got also three uh, mana of casting cost, but one generic and two colored mana. As for the additions, as you can see, I have got various editions here. I'm not going to lie to you. These are very often the cheapest edition I could get because I was just interested in building the biggest collection I could. For many of these cards, I have only got one copy, so I don't have a playset of each of these cards. But I do have a playset of the most easy to cast and important cards. So obviously, I do have a playset of Swords to Plowshares. I do have a playset of Spirit Link and Disenchant, but of course I have only got one balance because it's restricted, and I also have got one copy of, let's say, Reverse Polarity, because it's just a very, very useless card, I can say. But still, I just wanted to have as many unique cards as I could. And this was my rationale for not getting some of the cards that I don't have. As you will see, I have approximately 92, 93, I haven't really counted percent of all old school magic cards. And I'm missing such cards as uh, the Abyss, Ali from Cairo, Field of Dreams. So, most expensive cards from Legends, uh, Antiquities and Raven Knights, and also Unlimited. The cards that I didn't want to or couldn't get just because these cards are quite narrow in the use, because, let's face it, Old Man of the Sea, really nice card, Drop of Honey, really nice card, but it's not a card that is vital, it's not a card that is really, really necessary for your victory. So I could get, of course, Field of Dreams, but for that money I decided to get some weird and sometimes stupid reserved list cards, and here we are with, for example, this one, and uh, this one, and uh, this one, reserve list cards, cards that are not usable at all, but I just wanted to have as many cards as I could uh, for the sake of this collection. As for the editions, we can also say that I do have uh, quite a big amount of Italian Legends and Italian the Dark, a little bit less than that, because English the Dark is not that expensive. And I do have many of these cards from the core sets in revised. 
I do have some unlimited, I do have a little bit of alpha, a tiny bit of alpha, and the set I have the least of, I think, is actually beta, because I specifically wanted to have some alpha, but never specifically wanted to have any beta cards. Fallen Empires is not something that I really wanted to assemble a full collection of, so you will only see that I have some random Fallen Empires cards, most of them are my playables, and they are also arranged separately on this page, so that when I build a deck I mostly take the cards from the Swedish uh, ban list, and I do not touch these Fallen Empires unless I am playing in an environment where Fallen Empires uh, is allowed. On Skype, of course, I mostly mean. And uh, I did have some of the cards more than a playset, because it's quite difficult to keep track of the inventory, so unfortunately I got, uh, I think, Gasman Ogre, even more than, one, uh, more than uh, four copies. I had more than four copies of Elves of Deep Shadow, but they're absolutely gorgeous, I mean, how can you dislike them? And uh, in this particular binder I have removed all the duplicates, which is nice, and uh, unfortunately, even though I said that I got most of my cards uh, before the spike, so I got, let's say, uh, my ancestral recall for $150 collector's edition, which is very cheap by the, you know, today's prices if we compare that. But, uh, for instance, it was very difficult to get natural selection. There was only one copy uh, on one of the major stores, and it was, uh, you know, rather expensive and I did get some cards after the spike, uh, such as Darkness after the buyout, so that's how it happened. But then again, I don't really regret it. Uh, again, I, as you can see, I'm, I was trying to get as many uh, non-collector's edition cards, so for instance, I have some Berserks from Unlimited, but some of these are also from collector's edition. As for the sources of uh, filling my collection, I used various stores. I used uh, Star City Games, I used uh, Troll and Toad, and I used uh, Card Kingdom as well, mostly. These were the major stores that I bought from. And I sold a lot of my cards from Legacy, I sold a lot of my modern cards, basically all my modern cards, and some of the cards I just gave away to my friends, my local playgroup. And I just quit Modern altogether and I quit Legacy and uh, then I started playing Old School and I managed to get many of these cards just for the store credit after selling my cards to Troll and Toad and uh, to ABU games as well. <clears throat> so that's how this collection was built. As you can see I also have some Chronicles. This one is Chronicles, yeah. And Chronicles I really tried to avoid, but sometimes it was the cheapest version and uh, it was much cheaper than the others, so had to go with it. Master of the Hunt, I do have Italian Legends. So this gives you an idea about my cards, about my sets that I was using. And I actually stopped collecting Magic. Uh, I actually stopped buying new cards in late 2018 uh, just because some of the cards I didn't manage to get and it's really a pity when you look at the cards and you see that you didn't get let's say um, one of the duels for let's say $200 and now it's $500 just an example and of course you don't want to get the card that you could have gotten for much less it's, it's not going to happen. So this is why this collection is, you know, rather stable. It's almost frozen. And that's why I decided to share it with you. I don't have, for example, a tropical islands. I don't have volcanic islands. And I don't have any bayous. But I do have all other duels. And I only have two underground seas. But even that seems to be enough. As you can see, I bought some of the stupid, as some of you might say, cards. Such as um, Merchant Ship. But the picture is beautiful, right? And this is going to be one of the focus, one of the foci, maybe, of one of my future 
videos how we have some you know pet cards just because we love them um, and uh, it's, it's really worth uh, discussing it so of course since I have various editions here this one I, I'm afraid is what the fourth edition or even the fifth edition if it's the fifth edition, that is really not nice, but yeah, that's the fourth edition. So some of the fourth edition cards, and I'm really ashamed of that because 94 actually stops with revised, even though some people think it stops with unlimited, but still, most of the uh, core set cards I have got here are revised. So the thing is that I managed to get these cards uh, at my local store before I decided that I would heavily invest in old school magic and before I started placing orders for these cards abroad. So again, the power is from collector's edition. That's what I have. This card was surprisingly hard to get and so was telekinesis. Not sure if I'm going to use them at all. I do have some alphas as I said and one of the alpha cards is this one and I do remember how I got it for if I'm not mistaken about two dollars it was you know dirt cheap and I said okay if I can get it uh, from alpha if I can get an alpha card why not you know when you get some cards you just think sometimes okay some of them will be uh, from the more expensive edition, why not? And then you just go for it. And it, it's a really good idea to do that. Especially uh, when you see that, you know, what, what, what happens after that. Mana Drain, a very interesting case because, uh, as you can see, most of the expensive cards I have got are Italian. But for Mana Drain, the difference between English and um, Italian was not very big, and uh, I think that Mana Drain had just been reprinted in um, what, not Eternal Masters, obviously, Iconic Masters. And then I decided, okay, I will buy the English version because it will be easier to resell, but I'm not fooling anyone because I'm not going to resell these cards anytime soon. Uh, I mean, uh, this might be one of the last assets I'm going to sell uh, if, you know, something uh, really bad happens, God forbid. Um, I think that this is true for many of us. I would rather sell my, um, maybe, laptop. I would rather sell uh, some of my other assets than sell my magic collection, even if I, you know, desperately need money or something like that. But it's not going to happen that I'm going to sell this collection just because I got tired of it. You know, sometimes I did get tired of magic, and sometimes I thought I would quit, but uh, this is entirely uh, different from, let's say, modern. It's it, it, it's the essential part of us. Um, magic is so deeply... It's, it's, it's so deeply wide in our heads, especially the old-school magic, especially the... You know your teenage souvenirs, especially. I, oh, you see, I'm getting really emotional about this one. Um, when you look at such cards as Leviathan, and I do remember how I played Magic with my friends uh, on the PC. And this is how my love for old school Magic started, as I said, because obviously I uh, wasn't old enough to have played Magic. 9394 in 9394 and also it wasn't here in Russia at all back in those days so of course it all started with the computer game and when I look at this card I have so many memories and you understand that many bad memories uh, have a tendency to be er erased and this is just a purely therapeutic thing this whole old-school magic and um, it, it will be very hard to become separated with those cards, and I'm sure that many people feel exactly the same about them as I do. So, some of the Fallen Empires cards, as you can see, are just a part of a collection. 
And of course I did get, for instance, these uh, Merfolk Knights, uh, not Merfolk Knights, but River Merfolk on purpose, just for my Merfolk deck. But I do have Homerids, my collection of Homerids, right? Because I just wanted to build a collection of Homerids, that's all. And Wadella and War Machine, I don't have it because I wanted to have more Merfolk. It is because I wanted to have a collection of walls. And I did have a collection of walls, and it was a complete collection as of the year 2007, I think. And then I decided to stop, and um, I didn't get new walls because I thought that the Wizards would release um, defenders instead of walls. I thought that they had run out of ideas of walls, but of course they didn't. So that's why I stopped collecting walls. And anyway, I still have some of these cards because of my collection of walls. And this is exactly the reason why I have got a wall of wear in alpha again, I think. Right? So, yes. Is this an alpha? It's a very good way to know. Obviously, it is an alpha. Still artifact also alpha. You understand that I do love blue, right? Well, who doesn't? I think that there are only people who hate blue, but there aren't so many of them. Most people, are, you know, absolutely love blue. There are not many people who are impartial to blue, such as many people are impartial to green. They just play green because of, uh, let's say, Sylvan Library and Regrowth, right? And maybe sometimes Birds of Paradise. But blue is the color you either love or hate. So, how else did I get my cards? I also got my cards when traveling which is a very nice process, and uh, I went to some shops, to some magic stores in Europe. For instance, this one is from Austria, when I went to Vienna. I got some of these foreign black bordered cards, even though I did have a playset of uh, another edition already. And uh, I also got, by the way, before I forgot, I should show you one of the most beautiful things I got recently. This is one of the two cards that I had um, in 2019. This is one of the cards I bought not so long ago when I went to play Magic with my good friend uh, Manuel uh, when I went to Spain to a scientific conference. <laughs> you know how it is usually. Uh, you go to a scientific conference but then you end up playing Magic, which is really nice. And I played with a friend that I met on Skype which is very nice, and uh, for him it was the first uh, offline magic uh, match that he played in about 15 years, which is absolutely amazing, and I love it how magic brings people closer. It's always the case when I go anywhere, even if I don't really speak the local language very well, it's always a pleasure to go there, but, well, you understand that people who play magic usually do speak English, right? But still, Magic really does bring people closer, and if I have a possibility, I always buy a couple of boosters, and uh, I mean, I did that back in the days, because now I'm not really interested in the new editions, but I usually would go and buy some of the old cards, some of uh, 93, 94, or pre-modern cards, and I uh, forgot to show you, but of course I will do this um, in a specific video, this absolutely beautiful Alter by uh, the artist himself, Dan Frazier, and uh, you can see the, how this is the continuation of the card itself. You've got the snow also here in the corner, you know, talk about unglued in some way. Uh, very, very, very beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Really love it. Sadly, I don't have many of cards like this because I could only buy these from ABU Games and uh, I didn't really want it to heavily invest into it, but this one I really liked. So, let's proceed with those red cards. Wall of Earth, a really 
fun story about it. Again, about bringing back your childhood memories and dreams. All of Earth, as you understand, is not a very, uh, you know, stellar card, so to say. I don't think that I have ever seen this card in action. And I did see some people play a wall, such as Wall of Air, for instance. But this one I never saw. And um, obviously it's it's not, you know, something that can be said as uh, valuable. But uh, back in 2002, when I saw this card, and, you know, I was all about walls, as I said, I started collecting walls a long time ago, and uh, I wanted to get this wall from a guy, and uh, as I have already mentioned, we didn't actually get magic in uh, Russia until the year 2000, so obviously the only way we could get these cards was... Um, buying them online, and back then it wasn't reliable, people didn't really want to bother with their Russian post for a good reason, and actually not many people had any credit cards, so getting a card from abroad was a very, very difficult job. And when I asked the guy uh, how much he wanted for this particular card, and he told me that this particular card uh, was, uh, let me count that in the old rubles that we had, it was five bucks. Okay, five bucks for a wall of earth. What is it now? It's 25 cents. Even today it is 25 cents. Even with the old school boom and back then it was five bucks. And you know, the funniest thing is that back then I just didn't have the cash with me and I just thought, oh, Legends cards and, you know, this guy had this Legends card and of course if I had the money I would have bought it for my collection. So, this is just ridiculous, right? So, these are exactly those people that, you know, we call card sharks. Because people couldn't really use the internet, and if they could, then another person... I, I mean, I remember printing a, a, printing a price list of some of the cards. I didn't know back then that the prices really fluctuated. They changed quickly according to band-restricted, playability, top 8s and such. And I just printed a list of some of the recent uh, expensive rares. And uh, some people said to me, you know, the Russian card, uh, you know, the Russian card prices are not like the American card prices, so don't bother looking at them. Those people, of course, were the card sharks. And um, you understand, it was very easy to scam some people. So I did get scammed, unfortunately. Uh, but this was you know, the natural process of learning, especially when you're a teenager and you are overly excited about some of the cards. That's natural. So, here we have got red, as you can see. Some of the cards, you know, again, speaking of the factor of deciding whether to get or not to get uh, an unplayable card, this one is not really unplayable, but it doesn't really see any play, you know, almost at all. It's not bad. Well, this card is definitely bad. It, it's absolutely terrible, but I still got it. There was the price factor. For instance, I would get a card if it's uh, under 10 bucks, even if it's bad. If it was a little bit more expensive, then there had to be either the art I enjoyed, or maybe it had to have some synergy, such as Goblin Wizard. He's not necessarily bad. But you get that idea that I'm talking about. You know, it's a card that I would buy just because I liked it in some way or thought it would help me in my other decks. This one goes for this one as well. Incredibly overcosted. Not very important for any decks. As for the black cards, you can see that this is probably my weakest color, and it has always been. I don't know why, it just so happened. It just, you know, how it is. Um, it's just how it is. Some of these foreign black border cards are absolutely beautiful. Oh, by the way, Urgraders is the card that they had most copies of. I had three places of Urgraders. 
just because I didn't properly do my inventory, I didn't really see what cards I had, how many duplicates I had, and sometimes I just saw that I had uh, Arabian Nights and I also got some other edition, or maybe I replaced the fourth edition with the Arabian Nights or something like that. So then again, let's make a comparison here. So we've got one black. Card. All right, here it is. Say Walking Dead. So, if we compare the border, you will see that the border is different and the frame is also different. In the foreign black border, everything is so dark, and I really like it how it almost makes it a solid black color, the frame together with the border, which cannot be seen here in the Legends cards, the English one especially, because we can clearly see that this one is a little bit lighter, but the border is still almost pitch black. So this one, the reasons why I especially love those black black bordered cards, and I, of course, don't have all of these black black bordered cards, but still, Demonic Tutor is a card I had for a very long time. I had it for a very long time. Uh, this is probably one of my first old school cards. I mean, it wasn't uh, my acquisition that I made on purpose, but it just so happened. They didn't really use it, but they didn't want to sell it either because it was rather cheap for the amazing card that it was. Alpha Terror. Looks absolutely gorgeous. So, again, when I was buying these cards, uh, there were some cards that I really wanted to have. I mean, Sinkhole, as soon as I saw this card a very long time ago, I wanted to have it, and I, I told myself that I must have it. Uh, Word of Command, however, is a very weird, a very obscure card, but I still decided that I should have it, and I did buy the playset of them, actually. Nether Shadow looks really nice in collector's edition. Black bordered black cards, as I said, are really, really amazing. So, this concludes the black cards I have got. This one was one of the last cards I had, and also this one, because I didn't always want to get, you know, all the creepy cards. I, I don't know why, it's just a little bit unpleasant. But in the end I got them all. And you see that I'm afraid of this, the Fallen, that's why I um, decided to draw um, <laughs> glasses and uh, a smile on top of them. But, you know, that's a bit silly, of course. But in reality, you know, when I show this binder to my um, daughter, I don't want her to look at the more, you know, gory or scary cards. Uh, she's not really afraid of them, but I, I still sometimes would do that. I would show the cards, so didn't really want to show the, the scariest stuff. So this was my binder of colored cards. And then we have got a binder which is much smaller. And here we have got... Oh my god, it is heavy. <clears throat> basic lands. Most basic lands I have are from Revised, as you will see. Again, as I said, Revised is my um, set of the choice because it's still 94, but it's not extremely expensive. Technically, it is 94. I know, I know, Swedish purists, that you don't like that, you don't agree with me, but it is what it is. You know, you cannot argue with the simple um, ideas of time, you know, uh, and date. So, as you can see, there are some unlimited. If only I knew how expensive they would be, of course I would have got more, but it is what it is. Mountain. I had a kind of an experiment where I had different editions of Mountain. I wanted to get as many different editions as I could, just to demonstrate the difference in these to my viewers and uh, also to just myself to, to have you know as many editions as I could and there is going to be a video about it 
and uh, I don't have the infamous Arabian Nights mountain, the real one. I only have the Chronicles Arabian Nights. Uh, it's not even Chronicles. I think this is what Anthologies Arabian Nights reprint. So there you go. This is probably Alpha most expensive basic lens. The most expensive one is of course Alpha. Other than that, they're all revised, mostly. Strip mine with the tower. It spiked immensely, and I managed to get it just before the spike, you know, the satisfying feeling. But then I had some fourth edition and even this reprint. So I wanted to get some lands, some novelty lands, such as Safe Haven. Of course, there are the playable ones, such as Maze of Fifth. And this card is absolutely beautiful. It's one of the cards, uh, one of the guilty pleasures, because, you know, the card is atrocious, but the whole castle with two moons and uh, the starry sky and the mark pool, it's just... It's just the perfect fairy tale setting. I, I just absolutely love it. How could I not get that? And the same is true for these. So if I got them, why not get the whole uh, cycle? It really feels satisfying. <clears throat> so as for these, I do have uh, two play sets of some of those cards. And these cards are City of Brass. I do have the great... Uh, Japanese black bordered one that I got from Olga and thank you for that if you're watching this they're really nice and I'm really enjoying them it allows me to have two multicolored decks built at any given moment and I also have two play sets of Mishra's but the second play set I actually moved to pre-modern because Mishra's are nice but it's not a card that I particularly enjoy playing in any deck I can <clears throat> as for the duels, you see that I'm missing, as I said, uh, Tropical, Bayou and Volcanic. And Underground Seas I only have two copies of. Other than that, I've got all the duels I need. A little bit of Fallen Empires. A lot of Legends. A lot of Legends. Most of them are really stupid. I did have a great Legends deck, a really fun and flavorful Legends deck. I know that many people do have various Legends decks. And there was one that I experimented with, and uh, I think I will <coughs> post another video of this one on this new channel, because it's really worthy of our attention. Cars like this one, and this one was too bad to include it even in the fun deck. This one, however, proved to be quite nice, and the same can be said obviously about Gwendolyn and Tetsuo Mizawa was very good at keeping at bay some of my opponent's creatures. He was surprisingly good. Solknar goes without saying that he is great. There are many elder dragons. The pieces of jewelry, one of the most iconic cards. And you know the thing is that I don't have the Lotus as I say. I don't have Library of Alexandria either. Although these cards are great, and of course I would like to have them, but, you know, the cost of these two cards together would be more than the cost of my whole binder. So, again, this is a little bit debatable, and uh, it's not something that I really regret not getting. But as soon as I got the uh, Mox, guess one, uh, guess which one I have got first. Obviously, the Sapphire. And then I decided to say to myself, okay, so I got the sapphire, then I will get the pearl, because white and blue are my favorite colors of magic, and they're the most competitive ones, as I saw it. Then I got the... no, actually, the black one. Then I got the red one. And the explanation, you know, it's very interesting always how you justify some of your decisions, and then you still neglect what you have said to yourself. I said that in green we have got fast mana, not really fast mana, but acceleration, and in black we have got dark ritual, so these two are not so important, but in uh, red, white, and blue, in old school magic, you don't have any other ways to accelerate, that's why you need the moxen. 
needless to say I got them all <laughs> later on. Felton's Cane, such a nostalgic card, so beautiful. I have it in a foil and um, I, I just love this card. Mark Tiden, Mark Pool. I don't know what it is about those old school magic artists named Mark, but these were always my favorites, my absolutely favorite people of old school magic of artists. Of course, later I will talk about what artists I also enjoy, but these were our, uh, these two are among the best, definitely. Time Vault was recently unrestricted in Swedish, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe Atlantic as well, but they didn't decide to go for it and just get extra copies. No, this is not something I did and not something I would do later on. This one is a, a funny story because I got it, as you can see, and uh, with the Chris Rush signature, I asked some of my Facebook friends, they confirmed it, that it was the real signature, and I got it as a damaged card from Troll and Toad for 20 cents only. And uh, as for signatures, I'm not really a huge fan of these, but I know that Chris, Chris Rush uh, signatures are rather, uh, rather valuable. So, you know, if I already have a signed card, why not? Some of the cards I got after a spike, as I have mentioned, so I did get Sword of Ages for a whooping 40 bucks Italian. Really regret doing this, but, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but, of course, who, who would have thought about that? Uh, these cards, as you can see, are not uh, 93, 94, these are pretty modern and um, they were for the 95 magic format that we used, the format that we played and still occasionally play with the play group that we have got, old school, well there were various names for that, um, there were nationals, 95, they were old school, 93, 94, 95 and such. So I got some Homelands and uh, Ice Age cards especially for that. Most of them were playable, some of them were just fun cards that I got. And uh, I don't really play this particular format anymore, uh, but maybe I will come back to it one day. So that's why they're here. It's still nice. And I also have the tokens. Of course we will talk about the tokens separately. These are not the best examples of tokens, and uh, some of these are handmade by me. Well, not handmade, but I just, as you can see, made the images using cutting the using using the cut art. And some of these are micro prose tokens. They look amazing. And I was a little bit wrong with the size that I printed them in, but still, they're a lot of fun. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Of course, I will talk about these cards in depth, and um, it's good to be back. You know, I was uh, on a very long break from Magic, and uh, it's good to have my channel back. So I will redo some of the videos. And um, again, thank you for watching, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing you soon and uh, chatting about cards and maybe playing Magic with some of you. Bye!